The Book of Enoch, or One Enoch, is a complex and multi-layered ancient Jewish text attributed to the biblical character Enoch, who appeared in Genesis. He who was the father of Methuselah and the great-grandfather of Noah. Considering what little we know of Enoch and how meagre his mention in the Bible is, it certainly is interesting that such a dynamic and controversial text like One Enoch is dedicated to him. Even today, scholars still question why such a text that sees Enoch admonish fallen angels and journey through the cosmos had to be written at all, and why such a text was subsequently rejected from traditional scripture. Another hot question that often gets asked by scholars is who even wrote the story of the Enochian legend that sees our hero caught in the mix of disastrous Nephilim, horny evil angels known as the Watchers, and the subsequent almost interdimensional madness that sees Enoch launched across the world, and even through the universe. Of this there can be no definitive answer, and whilst there are some contenders, none of these can be definitively confirmed. The difficulty lies in when the Book of Enoch was likely penned, in an ancient Semitic language, possibly Aramaic, somewhere between the 3rd century before the Common Era and the 1st century of the Common Era, which places it firmly within the Second Temple period. This was a time marked by a proliferation of religious and apocalyptic literature. Basically, many ancient Jewish sects, including the Pharisees, the Sadducees and the Essenes were coming up with fresh religious ideas during this time, for it was a period where there was something of an intellectual shift in favour of Jewish writings. Here Judaism underwent significant development, including the emergence of diverse religious sects that were all brimming with new concepts and ideas. So it's not impossible that more than one author took a stab at the Book of Enoch, and continue to add their own literary takes and newfound beliefs, which would kind of explain why the various sections of the book feel so different from the sequences before or after, and why a lot of the book can be described as disjointed, or even discontinuous. To scholars, this is known as composite authorship, where the work in question isn't a monolithic work, but rather put together by more than one author from arguably different regions and even different time periods. The several distinct sections of One Enoch do reflect this, for where the book does begin by telling us of the evil angels, known as the Watchers, who descend upon mortal women to have their way with them, it does segue into a looser narrative that features heavy apocalyptic elements, including Enoch's visions, dreams, and astronomical understanding, that which is mostly given to him by the Archangels. We only need to look at an overview of each section to see how disjointed this book really looks and how the nature of each section differs so greatly that it seems more likely to be the case that the book was composed with contributions by different authors. Section 1, otherwise known as the Book of Watchers, from chapter 1 to 36, tells the story of the fallen angels, the Watchers, and how they came down to not only impregnate the mortal women, but to also teach man the evils of sorcery and warfare. Section 2, otherwise known as the Book of Parables, from chapter 37 to 71, shows us the visions Enoch receives that see him taken to the place where the Watchers are kept, after they had been punished, as well as an exploration of the final judgement, and the destiny of the righteous and the wicked. Section 3, otherwise known as the Book of the Heavenly Luminaries, from chapter 72 to 82, shows us movements of celestial bodies, and their perceived impact upon the earth. Section 4, otherwise known as the Book of Dream Visions, from chapter 83 to 90, shows us Enoch's dreams and visions, some of which are apocalyptic in nature and open to much interpretation. Section 5, otherwise known as the Book of Astronomy, from chapters 91 to 108, provides us with additional astronomical and calendrical information as well as more metaphorical journeys for Enoch through strange lands, not to mention his observations of the heavenly portals. As can be gathered from a thorough read of One Enoch, each section does read differently from the one that comes before or after it. Whilst it cannot be confirmed if authorship changes, the message and vision of what the book is meant to be about certainly does. At first, it really does come across like a fantasy story, but by the end, it is weighed down by theological and even philosophical suggestion, and it becomes glaringly obvious that each section is not necessarily congruent with one another. 
It leads me to question whether the authors of the Book of Enoch even really tried to make this narrative accessible and continuous. Did they even respect the previous entry and aim to persevere with the previous author's efforts? Or were they just keen to get their own message across? Another idea that suggests the Book of Enoch was written by ancient Jewish sects living in the Second Temple period is their favouring of apocalyptic literature. Apocalyptic texts often explored themes related to the end of the world, divine revelations and celestial visions, something that the Book of Enoch is jammed with. With this in mind, the Book of Enoch wouldn't exactly be out of place on the bookshelf of an ancient Jewish reader and may very well have been well received as a new piece of literature at that time. A primary idea, albeit easily dismissed, is that the author of the Book of Enoch was Enoch himself. This attribution to Enoch, however, is likely symbolic and not indicative of literal authorship. Remember, if Enoch was the author of the text, then that would mean the text would have had to have somehow survived the flood. You might argue that Noah had made a space for it on the ark, considering that this was his great-grandfather's work but the Bible makes no specific mention of this. With scholars agreeing that the text was written during the Second Temple period, long after the flood would have taken place, and even longer after Enoch's time, the agreed consensus is that Enoch's name was attributed to the text, along with his character, so that it might serve to lend authority to the text's teachings and give the whole narrative some credibility. Meanwhile, the Ethiopian tradition, specifically the Ethiopian Orthodox Tower Hadu Church, holds the Book of Enoch in high regard. It is included in the Ethiopian Biblical Canon. Within this tradition, the authorship is generally attributed to Enoch himself. It was during the 18th century the Scottish traveller and explorer, James Bruce, obtained several manuscripts of the Book of Enoch that were written in an ancient Semitic language, this being the classical language of Ethiopia, Gears. James Bruce's acquisition of these texts introduced the Book of Enoch to the Western world and enabled European scholars to begin studying it. With this idea, there are some communities that believe that the Ethiopian Book of Enoch, written in Gies, is the original, and that because according to some schools of thought that Gies is older than Aramaic and Hebrew, which is another language the Book of Enoch is believed to have originated from, the Ethiopian Book of Enoch must have therefore been the first iteration. Thus, it can be concluded from this argument that the Book of Enoch originated from Ethiopia. Indeed, a Jewish community was built in Ethiopia sometime in the 6th century before the Common Era, after the destruction of the First Temple. Many believe that these people were descendants of King Solomon and Queen Sheba, though other theories also exist including that these Jews were the surviving members of the lost tribe of Dan, or that they were descendants of early Christians who had converted to Judaism. With this Jewish characteristic, some have proposed that it was from these Ethiopian Jews that the Book of Enoch was written, and considering the Book of Enoch still remains a part of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, this idea has persisted. On the other hand, this can also be disputed by modern scholarship, where the general consensus is that the Book of Enoch was originally written in Aramaic or Hebrew, the same language first used for ancient Jewish texts. There is also an idea that the Book of Enoch may have been written partially in Aramaic and partially in Hebrew, as discovered amongst the Dead Sea Scrolls in the Caves of Qumran, which may fit in with the idea that the Book of Enoch was composed by different people across different time periods and in different places. Of the Aramaic Book of Enoch, the most significant find that suggests this was the original language that the book was composed of comes from the Dead Sea Scrolls. For those who are unaware of the Dead Sea Scrolls, these are a collection of Jewish texts discovered in the vicinity of the Qumran Caves, near the Dead Sea. These scrolls are associated with an ancient mystical Jewish sect, often believed to be the Essenes, who lived in the area during the Second Temple period. During the mid-20th century find of these texts, various Aramaic fragments of the Book of Enoch were found amongst the Dead Sea Scrolls, within the Caves of Qumran. Later, Greek and Latin fragments of the text have also been unearthed in other areas. With this, whilst it is near impossible to determine which language the Enochian legend was first fought up with, let alone who the original author was, it does at least prove that the Book of Enoch was known by Jews and early Near Eastern Christians. As to whether these fragments were originals, 
or whether they were copies from an earlier Semitic language, or the Ethiopian Gears, still remains up for some debate. The authorship of the Book of Enoch is a nuanced and evolving topic in scholarship. While the traditional attribution, as well as the Ethiopian tradition, associates it with the actual Enoch, the reality is likely more intricate, involving multiple contributors over an extended period. Nonetheless, the Ethiopian tradition, with its unique perspectives on authorship, adds an additional layer to the complex history of the book itself. Meanwhile, whilst the connection between the Essenes and the Book of Enoch is plausible, according to modern scholarly belief, it's important to note that definitive evidence linking the Essenes directly to the authorship of the book isn't entirely all there, and that realistically, we don't have a complete understanding of all the potential contributors of the Enochic literature. As always guys, if you've enjoyed today's episode, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. Until next time.